I know it seems like there's so many confusing rules you have to memorize when it comes to ranking acid strength, and it's hard to determine which rules apply when you're answering questions about strong or weak acids. Well, I'm going to run through all these rules and show you some quick and easy ways to determine acid strength. If you watch the Identifying Acids and Bases and Reactions video in our chemistry playlist, then you probably already know how to easily identify acids, but I'm going to do a brief recap. Arrhenius and bronze dilari acids are proton donors, which simply means the acidic compound will break a bond with the hydrogen and release it as H plus or proton into solution, the proton being the acid. So a strong acid is one that easily releases a proton and doesn't reform a bond with it. Lewis acids are lone pair acceptors, meaning it's a compound that can form a bond with another compound or atom that has a lone pair to contribute to the bond. In this case, a strong acid is one that has a greater affinity for and more easily forms a bond with an atom or compound with a lone pair. So now let's talk about how to easily identify strong acids. Electronegativity is one of the factors we can consider when ranking acids. When comparing acids that differ only by the electronegativity of the atom bonded to the hydrogen in the acidic compound, the more electronegative the other atom is, the more attractive it is to the hydrogen and the stronger the bond it will form with the hydrogen. This means that it is less likely to break the bond with the hydrogen and release it as a proton or acid into solution. Among these acidic compounds, fluorine has the highest electronegativity and iodine has the lowest electronegativity, and then chlorine and bromine are in the middle in that order. So the strongest acid is iodic acid due to iodine's lowest electronegativity, meaning it forms the weakest bond with the hydrogen and would most readily release the proton into solution, making it more acidic. So a strong acid is one where the hydrogen is attached to an atom with low electronegativity. Atomic radius is an even easier way to determine acid strength. Atomic radius increases as electronegativity decreases. So in our example before with fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, iodine was the least electronegative, therefore it would have the biggest atomic radius. This means that when comparing iodic acid to fluoric acid, Iodine has a lower electronegativity and therefore a larger atomic radius and will form a longer bond to the hydrogen, which is a weaker bond and more likely to break and release hydrogen or protons into solution, meaning it's more acidic than the fluoric acid in the beaker on the right side. Therefore, a strong acid is one where hydrogen is attached to an atom with a large atomic radius. A trick to help rank proton donating acids is to look at the atom attached to the hydrogen and the closer to the bottom left corner of the periodic table it is, the stronger of an acid it will be. This means going down in a group or going left in a period. The trick to ranking lone pair accepting acids is to look at the atom that will be accepting the lone pair and the closer to the top right it is, the stronger of an acid it will be. This means going up in a group and going right in a period. Notice that the nonmetals at the top right of the periodic table are not really included here because they're more likely to be lone pair donors, known as Lewis bases. If electronegativity and atomic radius aren't apparent among acidic compounds, then inductive effects is another factor we can look at to rank acids. In these three compounds, the hydrogens are each attached to the same atom, oxygen. So it's not just a question of electronegativity of the atom attached to the hydrogen. So let's look at the differences between these three compounds. Notice that the middle compound has one chlorine attached. Chlorine has an electron withdrawing effect because it's more electronegative than the carbon it's attached to, so it will withdraw electrons toward itself and in effect away from the oxygen, making the oxygen more partially positive and less likely to hold on to a partially positive hydrogen, therefore releasing the hydrogen as a proton because like charges repel. 
So looking at the third compound, it has two chlorines attached to it, which is twice the electron withdrawing effect. Once again, pulling electrons away from the oxygen, making it even more partially positively charged and even less likely to hold on to a partially positive hydrogen, therefore more easily releasing it as a proton and less likely to rebond with a proton, making it the strongest acid of the three. So we can say having electron withdrawing effects in an acidic compound makes it a stronger acid. And electron withdrawing effects are due to having more electronegative atoms than the carbons or other atoms in the compound. Let's take a quick look at the first compound to see what's going on there to make it such a weak acid. The hydrogen is attached to an oxygen, which is attached to a carbon. The carbon is less electronegative than the oxygen, making it an electron donating group, which means it will donate electrons to the oxygen, making it even more partially negatively charged, which means it will be more likely to maintain the bond with the partially positively charged hydrogen, because opposites attract. So it will be less likely to release a proton into solution, making it a weaker acid. So we can say electron donating effects will result in a weak acid. So a strong acid is one that has electron withdrawing effects away from the hydrogen or lone pair accepting atom in the acidic compound. A trick to help rank proton donating acids is to first identify the acid in each compound, which is the hydrogen, and then draw arrows toward any and all electron withdrawing groups, which are atoms that are more electronegative than the carbons or other atoms in the compound, and the compound with more arrows pointing away from the acidic hydrogen will be the stronger acid. You can actually use the same trick for ranking lone pair accepting acids. Start by identifying the lone pair accepting atom in each compound, which is boron in this case, and then draw arrows toward any and all electron withdrawing group. The compound with the most arrows pointing away from the lone pair accepting atom will be the stronger acid. Resonance stability is a final factor to consider when determining acid strength. For proton donating acids, if the acidic compound has any hint of resonance, meaning alternating pi electrons, including double bonds, negative charges with electronegative atoms, then upon losing the proton, the conjugate base is what we call resonance stabilized. Well, what does this mean for acid strength? Resonance-stabilized conjugate bases experience mobility of pi electrons, which means the movement of lone pairs and double-bonded electrons, meaning the negative charge, where hydrogen would usually attach, is never in one place. At one moment, the oxygen can be negatively charged and a hydrogen can approach, but in the very next moment, the negative charge can become a double bond and the hydrogen cannot bond. This is what stabilizes the base and prevents it from rebonding the hydrogen, which makes the original acid compound a strong acid. Remember, a strong acid is one that easily releases a proton and never rebinds it. With regard to resonance stability, a strong acid has a resonance stabilized conjugate base and the more resonance, the stronger the acid. You've heard of the rule that every strong acid has a weak conjugate base, and the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. Well, this particularly means that the conjugate base cannot rebind the acid with a proton, leaving the acid in solution, making for strong acidic conditions. To help identify weak conjugate bases, look for resonance stabilization, low electronegativity, large atomic radii, and the presence of electron withdrawing inductive effects, pretty much all the things that make an acid a strong acid. A resonance stabilized conjugate base is very unlikely to rebind the acid. Conjugate bases that have low electronegativity and therefore large atomic radius are less likely to rebind the acid, leaving it concentrated in solution. And finally, conjugate bases with electron withdrawing effects make it difficult for the positively charged acid to rebind to the partially positively charged conjugate base. 
And lastly, if values are given to indicate strength of acids, know that strong acids have a high Ka and a low pKa. Ka is simply a value that indicates the ability of an acid to act as an acid. So a high Ka will equal a strong acid. A high Ka mathematically equals a low pKa, which means high Ka, low pKa equals strong acid. And the higher the Ka and lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. Simple as that. I hope this video helps you identify strong acids or rank acids based on strength. Thank you for watching.